Hi everyone. Would you like leaders of your organization to have a behavioral operating system that they default to each and every day? One that would have them doing what they say they will do, walking the talk of shared values and shared visions, one that will have them influencing others to find new ways to change things up and helping others along the, the pathway to that in order to serve customers in a way that encourages higher levels of service, more engagement, more business, and even increased bottom line. Well, there's good news. In this short video, that's exactly what I'll be taking you through. I'll be taking you through what I've done with the system, the same system that we call the five practices of exemplary leadership that we've used with many, many other corporate organisations. We've implemented the five practices of exemplary leadership across hundreds of organisations in Australia, Asia, Middle East, Europe, UK, and even the US and the results are always great. Some people enter this whole gateway, you could say, through a workshop. Others come through the LPI, which is a psychometric, psychometric instrument as the gateway. And others enter the five practices of exemplary leadership through an organisation-wide change initiative, such as our unified leadership proposition. It doesn't really matter which way you enter and get to know the five practices of exemplary leadership. What's more important for me is that it's always simple to use. It's simple for leaders to adopt. It simply correlates. You can always see evidence of the correlation between the actions and the results. And in my humble opinion, it really stands apart from any other leadership system that I know of. And that's why our clients continue to seek to implement it and help us advertise it too. So hi, I'm Debbie, Debbie Nickel. I'm a certified master of the five practices of exemplary leadership. And I'm also the managing director and founder of a business called Business in Motion. And no surprises, our origin story is the reason we exist. Because when I was going through my career, all I saw in leaders were was separation, ego, competitiveness, disinterest, um, just driving the status quo every day. And I was being left behind. I didn't want to live or work in that world. So that led me to my entrepreneurial track and working with global leadership. I connected with the five practices of exemplary leadership and I'm now up to probably 12 years of investment with this globally reputed methodology. Why? Because it simply works. It creates great leaders, great workplaces and great results. I have no doubt about that. And it also answers many CEOs problems. You know, CEOs need leaders who take people together to a new world, new way of operating in order to keep the, the customer's needs catered for and the shareholder targets provided for. Yet, many CEOs have become baffled by science and many attempts to introduce leadership into the organisation fails. You know, I often hear them say, look, it, it's just too hard or it takes too much time or I didn't know that leadership correlates to increases in performance. Yet, I've never heard those complaints or barriers or objections from anyone who has engaged with the five practices. So what is so special in the story of the five practices? Because what I love, first of all, is there's an invisible red thread between the five practices that as you progress through, the engagement and the trust 
grows. And once we've got commonality and sharedness, that's going to have a direct impact on results too. So what's the story? Well, it starts at the very beginning where leaders model the way. They need to get to know their own voice, who they are, what do they stand for? What are their values? Because once people see you consistently being who you are, get to know you, like you and trust you. And the same goes the other way when you recognise your people's voices. And eventually those values, there'll be commonality, there'll be things that bind us together. So now that we know, like and trust the leader, most people are then willing to consider where the leader wants to take them. And that would be a picture of a future that's bigger, better, brighter, more efficient, more effective, more easy, whatever it is. But if we've done the connection correct in the first place in modelling the way, then people will not only just consider, but they'll find a connection between themselves, their own future and the vision, and they'll start sharing the new vision and building it together. So it becomes bigger than the original leader's vision and it becomes our vision. So now that they know you, like you, trust you and have bought into where you see you'd like to take them and they have also extended the story, they're very happy to then go up that mountain. Remember, they're standing at the bottom of this huge mountain looking up to a new destination that they've never been to before. And to do that, it's going to require them to challenge the process, find new ways, take new risks. You know, there's no path up that mountain. Probably make mistakes along the way, but those mistakes will be great opportunities for learning and also great opportunities for small wins along the way. And as we are challenging the process and getting organisational change, there'll also be individual change happening because there'll be people who'll be needing a hand. They will be enabled through increased competency, confidence and collaboration. Because to get to that new destination, whether it's a new IT infrastructure, whether it's a new operating culture, whether it's a merger, acquisition, whatever it is, it's never easy and leaders don't act on their own, but it really helps to have lots of encouragement and encouraging the heart is where that community spirit as well as individual excellence is recognised and appreciated. That story gets a lot of people excited and when I add that behind the storyline there's actually six leadership behaviours behind each of the five practices, it really becomes a fully encompassed uh, operating system. Could you identify through that story where there's opportunity for increased performance and productivity to correlate with net, increased net and bottom line results? It's definitely in there. And because this is an evidence-based evidence or research-based methodology, just like to share with you what the data does actually say. Across 94 different organisations, researchers found that a company's net income growth and stock price performance over a 10 year period were significantly correlated with the extent to which individual contributors or frontline employees reported that their senior leaders engaged with the five practices. Actual bottom line marketplace results stemmed from how their leaders behaved and in turn, how their constituents or their followers performed. In other words, great leadership does create great workplaces that does produce great results. I hope you're as excited as I am and wish to now schedule a 30 minute time slot with me. We call it the 30 minute five practices leadership system audit. And what we're going to achieve in that over on the left in the beginning, we're going to see where your organization aligns to the five practices leadership system. We're then going to along the way, you will take away probably three suggestions where you might be able to implement 
straight away immediate actions to implement and together we will be considering if your organisation is really a good fit for the five practices. Yeah, those five practices of exemplary leadership and also increase business performance that it will produce. So look down at the bottom of the page, you'll see that big yellow button, click on it now and I look forward to spending time with you in your and my call together.